So one thing we notice about being in this industry is that a lot of times customers come in just overwhelmed and confused. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna cover 15 of the most common key terms that you must know to help save you some money. My name's Gabe. I'm Pablo. We're from Mattress Makers, and today we are gonna cover how to save you some money by just knowing what terms that customers need to know. Yes, and you know what? It's a sad fact that a lot of times, and this is not just in our industry, but I notice in industries in general mm -hmm. that a lot of times the salespeople just take advantage of ignorance. You know, right. if you don't, if you go in, and I've done it with you know when I was shopping for a home for the first time or a loan for the first time, I was very ignorant on a lot of these just terms that they were throwing out at me. It's like, okay, I don't want to look like a dummy. So I didn't ask any questions. And if I knew a few of these terms that it would have helped me just have more peace about it. And I probably would have got a better rate and I got a better deal if I knew these terms. So same thing with mattresses. Yeah, and you just nod your head, right? You just don't want to look like, yeah, like you said, ignorant. So you yes. just like nod your head and agree. And all of a sudden the, the salesperson's like, I know they don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. You know, like this guy could have said, man, this has 16.66 gigawatts. And I was like, okay, yeah, all right, yeah. And, you know, and so as I, I just, just went with it, you know? So if you hear a mattress person talking about gigawatts, then run. Okay, so Gabe, let's go number one. What is one term that would be helpful to know? A big one thrown around, people come in is hybrid. And then they, you say, they don't even ask what is a hybrid, not all the time, but they say, do you have a hybrid? Then when we kind of ask a little question, well, what do you mean by that, you know? Yes. And so a lot of times they're like, actually, I don't even know. Yeah, I mean, that's been thrown around with golf clubs, with cars, with so many places that use hybrids. We've actually done a couple videos on hybrid mattresses. We're gonna hit these all really quick. Yeah, very certainty. So, yes. But basically, Start with a pocket of coil, yep. individually wrapped coils. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna top it off with a specialty foam, they say. So most hybrids you'll see is gonna be with memory foam on top. And then you'll have the pocket of coils right underneath as a support. Yep. Or what we like to do is we like to make our hybrids with natural latex. Yes. So it's natural latex on the top, and then you have pocket of coils as a support. And usually the, yeah, and usually the hybrids are gonna be more of a smooth top not quilted top where you can actually feel the foam directly underneath it so if it's like one of those you know quilted ones with like the poofy top panel those are actually all terms that would be helpful to know too but we're not going to go over them but those would be more of a traditional mattress a hybrids are going to be a very more of a minimal with one or two layers and then the smooth top yeah. and or covering on the top so that's, that's a hybrid but if you want to go deeper check out our other hybrid videos that we're gonna, we could, we could post in at the end. Okay, so another term, which is actually very useful to know is ILD. Yeah. Gabe, what is ILD? ILD could be a little bit more confusing, but just say for instance, so you got a six, this is a six inch block of latex, but what they do is they start with four inches of like latex. And what they do is they say, how much pounds does it take to compress that four inch block? 25%, yes. so basically one inch. And if you see a 24 LD, it's what? 24 pounds? 24 pounds of pressure. Yeah. yeah, 24 pounds of pressure to take it down one inch. And really, it's just a firmness rating. That's what it is. The higher the number, the firmer the material, the lower the number, the softer material. So a 40 ILD requires 40 pounds of pressure to, to make it compress 25%. So, and if you really want to impress that salesperson, say, what is the indentation load deflection of this or ILD? That's what ILD stands you for. Might throw them off yeah, the indentation. In, indentation load deflection, that's ILD. Yeah, he would not know what you're talking about, but he'd be like, okay, this guy knows more than me. So I'm not gonna try any fix, no, not gonna use my gigawatts terminology for this guy. Okay, so yeah, that's ILD. Now, another term, Gabe, what is another term that they should know? Yeah, another one is, we talked about a little bit, was convoluted foam. Convoluted foam. Yeah, also known as? Egg crate foam, we've all seen it. We've all seen egg crate foam. Mm -hmm. So, we don't have any here, but I'll, we'll post it on the, you'll see a little snapshot of it. So, Gabe, explain what is convoluted foam? Yeah, convoluted foam is that, so what they do is they have this machine, it's got this, uh, that, that cuts it, like those, that egg crate, right? So what they do is, right, they take like a three inch block of, let's say in this foam, and then they cut it to have that egg crate shape. And it's more story, 
Yes. But what they're doing is they're out of that three inches of foam, they can now get two pieces yes. that they can use in the mattress. So they shave their costs, right? Kept the prices. They said, hey, you know, this is now an aerated type foam, lots more breathability, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Right. So when you see three inches of convoluted foam on it, it's actually like, there's a difference. Not all three inches of foam is gonna be created equal. This is three inches of foam, but if you have three inches of convoluted foam, you're gonna be using half the amount of foam in there. So I have talked about it in past videos that I am not a big fan of convoluted foam. It is me, in my opinion, it is more of a marketing story you know, to help save money. So convoluted foam, if they say this has convoluted foam on it, it's not that big of a deal, you know? So that is the third one. Doesn't mean it's a bad mattress, just it's not that big of a deal. Not, yeah, yeah it's not that big of a deal, you know, and they, they prices jump up just because it has convoluted foam. Yeah. So yes, do not worry about convoluted foam. You know, that's, yeah, it's all convoluted. So number, what were we number at? Four? Four. Gabe, the fourth one, that is helpful to know is what? Uh, fourth one is uh, mattress ticking. So ticking is the, the cover that covers the mattress. It's, it a, it's when, you, when you're walking in the showroom, you see all the mattresses on the floor, the mattress is covered in is the ticking. Yeah, I mean, I think we have a quick sound. I'll put it on, a, I'll post it actually. Quick timeout, I'm gonna grab a little piece of the ticking. One second, timeout. Time in. Okay, this is a little sample of Mattress ticky. It's the cover, the mat, the fabric on the mattress. It's done in upholstery. I don't know why the mattress industry and the, and the upholstery company has to get fancy and call it ticking, but I'm sure there's a reason behind it. But there's different types of ticking too. What are the different types of ticking? Yeah, you've got a damask, uh, which would be like a like a woven, like more just a tighter like fabric, a right? Damask, yes, it is a much tighter, no stretch. Yeah, a damask. Then you have a knitted, like a stretch knitted fabric, which this will be a knitted. This will be a knitted one. This is a knitted one. This is, would be a more of a stretch knit with a lot of stretch to it, which is more common than you see these days. Yeah. And then there's the you know the third one, uh, the jacquard. The jacquard is very. It's kind of like a damask. It is more of a stiffer one. Not much stretch, a little bit more, you know, old school, but it's still used in some beds. So that is ticking. And I'm, we're gonna do a video on just mattress ticking because the ticking of the mattress can actually play a big part in the way the mattress feels. You can have everything the same on the inside, but if you just change the ticking of the mattress, that could totally change the way it feels, the way it responds, even the breathability of the mattress. So ticking is actually very important, you know, and then you wanna just talk about if you're in the store talking about, to the salesperson ticking, you know, that could depend on the breathability, excuse me, I have a little cough, but the breathability of the material and how it feels. So ticking is the number four uh, term? Four number fourth, okay. Now let's talk about the fifth term. What should we know? Yeah, you know, another one is like, the two different types of latex. Yes. Uh, let's just jump into like Dunlop first, right? So yes. there's Dunlop latex. Yes, if you're looking for, if you're looking for latex, it's a good thing to know. Go. Yeah, so here's Dunlop. So, Dun, you know, you put them side by side, they look very similar. You know, people think, well, how do you know if it's Dunlop or Tally? Being around it, we know a lot of it. Yes. But Dunlop, it's just the process on how the latex is made comes from the same rubber tree. Yep. It's just the process through them, the manufacturing process, really. That's different. That separates Dunlop from the other one. Tally tends to be more expensive too. You know, Dunlop is a little bit less expensive. Yeah. Tally has a, a little bit, there's a couple more steps in the process. So you can spend a little bit more on Tally. And even within there, there's a range of like purities. There's blended, there's natural. Even with Dunlop, there's synthetic, blended, natural. So, but just knowing what type, if you're looking on your journey, your mattress journey, and you see just latex in there, what is it? Dunlop, Tally, because that, even the ILDs can technically be the same, but they can feel totally different depending on the type of latex. Right. And we have a video going, taking apart Dunlop versus Tally. So I could even post that one as well to get a little bit deeper in, in the different latex types. But if you're looking at a mattress and they say it has got latex in it, and you're not shopping for a mattress, it's good to know, is it Dunlop or is it Tally? Yes. And Tally does tend to have a higher, little bit higher price point just because of it costs more to make it. It is, yes. So the next good thing to know is foam encasement. Yeah. Like you see this a lot, especially like 10 years ago, five, 10 years ago, it was more common to see it, but foam encasement, what is foam encasement? Yeah, so here's, grab the coils again. So imagine, so you've got the coils and then you got this foam all around the perimeter, right? So you got the foam all around the edges. Yes. 
and that's what that is it's it's in this foam is encasing the coils so, to provide so yes if you have it like like so you have a, about a three to four inches of foam around the whole perimeter of the bed i'll put a picture of it on this video so you can see how it looks but that's foam encasement yeah and usually it's a stiff foam that they're going to put on there because you want a firm edge yep does two things gives it a, a firmer edge but then also just makes it look you know more just more complete yeah it does it does give a more finished look it does give it a very firm edge there is a downside on foam encasement i'm not a huge fan of foam encasement we have talked about it in also past videos too which we'll, we'll post but it does save money on the manufacturing process so a lot of companies like to use it you know because it's cheaper to do foam around the perimeter than actual coils edge to edge coils but over time especially if it's a lower density cheaper type of foam it will break down faster than a good solid edge to edge coil. Yeah. So that's where like foam encasement, like we've had a bed, like our entry level had the foam encasement. Our higher end bed did not have the foam encasement just because we wanted a more edge to edge coil. Yeah. So when we put firmer coils around the edge, so that's one way to do it. But yeah, to go a little bit more deeper, check out that other video that we did, edge support. That one is gonna give you a, little, a lot more information on the different types of, of edges. Now that leads us to the next term to yeah. know, which is, Coil, you're gonna see coil density versus coil count. So Gabe, what is coil density versus coil count? Yeah, coil density is, think about, you know, of the foam case, right? What they do is they say, well, the coil density is, let's just throw a number, 1200 coils. But really the only coils that are in there, let's say is 900 coils, Yes. right? The They're saying, well, if we didn't have this foam in case, it would actually have 1200 coils. So we're gonna yeah. say the coil density is 1200. Yes. But our actual coil count is actually how many coils are really inside that, you know, that matters. Yes. So, so it's a little, it's padding the numbers, padding the stats. Okay, I have, Oh, they see just coil density. Okay, 1200, okay, that's good. You know, and, and it's just a fake metric that really doesn't really mean that the mattress is better. But yeah, coil count is actual, the true coils, you know, but the coil density is that foam what Gabe talked about. Yeah, I could say, well, shoot, my, my height density is actually like 6'3", but you know, if my legs are a little bit longer, I'm just kind of throwing that out there and my, you know, right? Yeah. Kind of like that. I was gonna say like four foot 18 or something like that. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that is coil density. Okay, so the next term to know that would be very helpful is motion separation. Gabe, yeah. what is motion separation? Yeah, it, just what it sounds like. You know, it's you've got two people in bed. Is that one, let's say you're moving in the mattress and then is, is that removing the motion to your partner? Yes. You know, or is it separating it? How well is it keeping that motion from your partner? Yeah, I mean, there's people that replace their mattress just because yeah. they can feel the other person move too much. And it usually happens on a, on a connected coil spring, you know, where they're all connected mm -hmm. together. You know, there's that motion, the old school spring systems. But yeah, motion separation. Then there's different ways to actually, that, there's different types of mattresses that are better at motion separation, yeah. I should say. So like Gabe, what are some of the, the mattresses that you would recommend with, for, for great motion separation? Yeah, one, an all latex one will do a really good job. All latex is very good. But then memory foam, you see that. That wine glass, that person jumping on the mattress. Yeah. On the side of the bed and the wine glass is just staying still. That is a great right. demonstration of the motion separation. Yeah. Memory foam I think does it the best. Yes. Um, another one is get the, the, the pocket coils. So. Yeah, the pocket coils too. The pocket coils, I think, are the pioneers. The whole talk about motion separation, where you know each coil is in its own pocket. If you guys remember that bowling ball commercial where they would drop the bowling ball and the pins don't move? The old beauty rest commercials. That was probably one of the best demonstrations of the whole motion separation. So when you see your motion separation, use that as like a factor when looking for a mattress. How is the motion separation? I would say. Pocket coils, latex, memory foam, those are all gonna be really good with motion separation. Yeah. So the next one that we wanna use is gonna be, since we're already going in, pocket coils. You know, pocket coil, yeah. what is a pocket coil? A wrap coil, an encased coil, all of those is turn. Let me grab it. Let's wrap it again. Grab it again. Okay, so this is it. Each coil is in its own pocket. Now. There is the open coil, a Bonal coil. I was debating on putting those into the terminology too in this video, but I'll put a, I'll put a little picture on there because you got Bonal coil. Oh, shot of coils. We done, yeah. yes. We have actually have a whole video on coils, but the pocket coil, this is 
our opinion, probably the best type of coil system. Now here's also within pocket coils, not all pocket coils are created equal is because you got most, and the, again, I'm referring a lot to other videos yeah. on this on this video. For more depth. For Yeah, just for more depth. So we use a Texas pocket spring coil where you see that's in a four pack right here. Your typical coil system is gonna be just each pocket are gonna be in line after line after line, you know? Where the downside on that is you could get a little bit more lean to it, you know, where it doesn't, it takes away that stability. And also it doesn't, it has more of an accordion effect. This coil system that we landed on, because it's in a four pack, it's a lot more stable, a lot more supportive, gonna just have a lot more substance to it and without the lean and without that crazy accordion effect. Yeah. So that's pocket coils. Ask him that when you're looking for like what type of coil, even if it's a, what type of pocketed coil too. Yeah. You know, so, but that's the pocketed coil term. Speaking of pocketed coils now, that leads us to the next one, which is, we're going a little deeper yeah. on this one, power loaded coils or power pack coils. I've, I've heard them use different terms, but power loaded coils. Yeah. What is that? What does that mean? Yeah, power loaded coils are ones that are just think of like already have been like pre-compressed so that yes. people think, oh, my coils are gonna break down. So what it is is like this coil, it's actually, let's say like a 10 inch coil fit in an eight inch encasing. Yes. So what's happening is that coil constantly wants to push back and give you that support instead of just gonna break down. Yes, and the advantage of that is because when you power pack them, it's gonna prevent that mattress from dipping because you already have that tension pushing up. Yeah. You know, having a power loaded coil is gonna give you more tension. It's gonna support, the coil is gonna support you a lot better. Yeah. So it's gonna prevent any of those body impressions. So like if I take apart this pocket and open this up, this that is spring is gonna be probably closer to right here is the power loaded coil which is in our opinion a better way to do it yeah. with the coil system not every pocket coil is going to have be a power loaded or a power packed coil ask them that that's something that i would be one of the most mattress sales people are not going to know what a power loaded yeah. or power packed coil is and you're like hmm that's gonna again it's gonna prevent them from just trying to do anything funny anything fishy you know so power load or power pack coil. So the next term is gonna be tufting, or also we, you could also put, throw in inner tufting mm -hmm. in the mattress. What is tufting? Yeah, tufting is where you see these mattresses that have, instead of like all the layers been glued. Yes. Right? They've got this needle and this, you know, this thread is going through the mattress with this uh, fabric, usually it's a fabric button. Yes. You know, and it keeps everything tight and everything together. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's really like what the tufting is. It is, it is an art. You'll see this, you know, so here's some examples right here of what a tufting mattress looks like. Yeah, most companies are gonna use glues in the mattresses, you know, to keep the layers together. When you when you tuft it and when you inner tuft it, instead of using glues, you're putting those, you're putting it through with that needle that Gabe was talking about, and it keeps it from shifting, but also tufting the mattress is gonna also help prevent body impressions too, yeah. because you're compressing the material a bit, then you're putting that needle through. It's gonna help reduce the body impressions. Yeah. You know, a lot of the luxury beds use tufting. Even more, the mainstream beds are starting to use tufting. Mm -hmm. One downside I hear on tufting though, because you have those almost like buttons going through. Yeah. Sometimes people could feel those indentations. I've had people complain about the feeling those little those grooves with indentations. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I like Tufton. I always love the look of Tufton. I love the advantages of Tufton. But those that, those are things that have come up with with people on a Tufton mattress or yeah. trying out a Tufton mattress. And inner Tufting is just going to be the same thing. It's just that you won't visually see it on the outside. It's going to be more on the inside. Yes, yeah. Okay, so another thing that you guys will be helpful to know is going to be the tape edge. What is the tape edge of it? Mattress, not every mattress has a tape edge, but you know, it's, what a game, what is a tape edge? It, it really, it's just, a, you know, like the piping that you see around the edges of the mattress. Yes. You know, it's really, it's one, it's to close off that mattress to, yes. to sew it up, you know, and you can either have it on the top, you know, if you have it more like the waterfall, you can have it under the bottom. Yeah. Right. Or, you know, some, yeah, some companies don't even use a tape edge. It's you know, they're more like zippers and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah. It's more, I mean, it's not an essential feature. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have a huge use, except that it does, it, it, what you see around the top side of the mattress is how they close the mattress. Yeah. You know, not, again, some mattresses have it, some mattresses don't, but having the tapage, knowing that term, 
Most people don't know that term. Even mattress sales people don't know that term, but it's good to know. But it's also one that we do see customers that are trying to explain it and they're like, you know, the on the side, the piping, yes. and they're like, okay, you're talking about the tape edge. Okay, gotcha. When I hear people say tape edge on it, I was like, okay, great. They know about mattresses. They've done some homework. They've done some research. And I love talking to them because now I can just go, they have more value in what we're talking about with mattresses and everything else. So it's good to know. It's one of those things, good to know. Not essential, but it's good to know. Yeah. Okay, so the next one is gonna be zoning. Zoning. Zoning, what is zoning? Like permits zoning or what is zoning? Zoning is, again, it could be by, like you have your different zones as far as firmness on your mattress. Usually they do it in coils. Yes. You could do it in foam. You have seen it done like in latex, Yep. right? What they'll do is, let's say on the top part in the shoulder, it could be a little bit softer. Yes. So maybe it's softer up here in the first third, the middle third, it could be a bit firmer. And then the bottom third is gonna be softer again. So it's just a zone, it's just a, they usually we call it, you see a zone coil. Yeah, sometimes there are seven zones, five zones, three zones, yeah. you know? So as Gabe was saying, like you have just different firmnesses throughout the bed, but I have mixed opinions on it. It's a good idea in some cases, but because we've zoned in the past. Here's the thing about zoning. Zoning has, I have seen, turned into more of a marketing story, one of those marketing stories, just because everybody's zone's different. You know, especially if you have a couple here, you know, I, the other day, husband was six foot three, wife was five foot two. So their zones were gonna be in totally different spots. They're gonna feel so, it, there was inconsistencies in the way that they were experiencing the bed just because the zones would have been different. If, if it was on a zone mattress, they would have totally different experiences on a zone bed. So I'm not a huge fan of zoning. You know, I think it's more of marketing. Now, if you could get like each individual zone tailored to it, that's a little bit different, but then you're looking at a very expensive mattress, Yeah. you know? But um, we've done that for people who are very precise, how to get it zoned in, you know, which is, you know, it's cool, but it's not cheap to do that, Yeah. you know? But like Gabe was saying, they do it with foam, they'll do it with coils. There's different ways to zone it out. But yeah, if you see zoning, seven zones, five zones, you know, don't pay, it's not worth paying that much extra to do a zone mattress, you know? It's not gonna be, it's not a, a huge customized tailored mattress to you. Again, because everybody's zone is a little bit different. So that is zoning. All right, so the next and final term that we that you need to know is gonna be about your warranty. Is it prorated or non-prorated warranty? Gabe, yeah. tell me what is prorated versus a non-prorated warranty in simple terms. Yeah, so let's say you could see a 20 year warranty. You know, if it's non-prorated, and that means it is the full 20 year lifespan of that mattress. If anything goes wrong, if it's in that warranty guidelines, falls in that warranty guidelines, then that company will replace out that mattress 100%. Yes, it's all in the company. If it's not prorated, that means it's fully covered. Correct. If it's prorated, and let's say it's a 20 years, 10 years prorated, that means maybe the first 10 years of it is gonna be non-prorated, so they'll cover 100% of the cost, and the back 10 years, is they're gonna say, okay, it's gonna be a certain percentage that we will cover. Yes. It's yeah. not a bad thing, it's not a good thing. You know, it's not, like, not that it's a bad thing, it's, it's just- more common. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's more standard is 20 year, 10, 10. That's more common. Mostly 10 years not prorated, just flat yeah. is more common, is a more common warranty. But if you see these 25, 30, I've seen lifetime warranties. There's a popular brand that has a lifetime warranty. Yeah. Read the fine print. There's so many little stipulations that they're not gonna take care of the entire match. I think our industry is the only one that does these crazy warranties though, right? You're probably right. You know, like you don't see that in tires. You don't see that in cars, you know, is these crazy warranties. And there was, a, there was time when it was like the next year, who would have a longer warranty? Yeah. 15 years, 16 years, like it would go up like every, an extra year, like every year warranty. And it got ridiculous. Typically you see like 10 years, 25 years, that's usually standard, but you would, usually it's like you see like a prorated warranties. Yes, that would be the prorated versus not prorated warranty. Yeah. So if you see that, don't be fooled and don't be taken by the warranty length of time. Don't pay more money on a crazy warranty because you gotta look at the fine print, okay? Yeah. 
And that wraps up the 15. Those are 15. Right? The 15 key terms you should know to help save you some money. But you said, how many more do we have? So we actually have a whole list. We have over 100 terms that our mattressology, our salespeople in our store that we call mattressologists need to know that you guys got to know these terms. Yeah. We're talking about a mattress. They're not going to use the majority of, with every customer, but it's good to know about what's inside the bed. And these are good terms to know. So we have you, if you want to see that entire list, you could go ahead and click on the link. We'll send you a copy of the entire mattress dictionary glossary of terms. It'll help you with your mattress shopping journey. So, and it's good. If, it's good reading too, yeah. you know, especially if you have a hard time sleeping at night. And if you guys found this helpful, please like, subscribe, share it with some friends and just want to talk about having to getting a good night's sleep. Feel free to give us a call. We love to chat with you because we do make mattresses and we do ship it around the country. Yeah. And then check on these next two videos, either one us taking apart a mattress, a name brand mattress, or B this one getting a little bit deeper in our mattressology talk. So I hope this helped you. Thank you. God bless. Sleep well.